Judith by Maria Brooks. Read for LibriVox.org by Grant Herlock. Calm was the hour of Bethulia's fertile heights. Rose duskily, night's dome of deepened blue, swelled beauteous o'er her countless founts of light, softening their brilliancy with gentle dew. Sad city, thou behold'st with dying hopes, thy mountains mournful in the mellow beams. The stranger's tent conceals their flowery slopes, and hostile hands withhold their plenteous streams. And mourning in thy streets thy children bear, opening the lip blood-wet or sorely dry, their burning bosoms while the moistened air heightens the thirst it cannot satisfy. With even step in mourning garb arrayed, fair Judith walked and grandeur marked her air though humble dust in pious sprinklings laid soiled the dark tresses of her copious hair while to her dwelling's tented top ascends the voice of many a sufferer below who supplicating at her portal spends his fainting breath in hollow tones of woe a faithful maiden on the battlement where pity still impelled her bending o'er though her heart bled at every accent learnt and wept the woes she could not soften more with cheek unstained by unavailing tears judith beheld her noble heart was wrung yet pensively serene her brow appears and wisdom's words flow sweetened by her tongue sapphira weep no more thou gentle maid but once again their piercing griefs allay to all alike be bountiful she said as far as with our wasted means we may when thou art pleased dear lady to command tis not for me to utter weak replies yet i entreat thee close thy bounteous hand all that we now have left would scarce suffice to each a scanty draught to-morrow's noon with scorching breath shall tell thy throbbing veins the last thick drop from every cistern's gone save that which still thy beauteous boy sustains but for a hope sure tis a hope from heaven to keep our altars from pollution free all save for him alone ere now were given and we had shared the general misery then if our prayers and sufferings could not move the lord to look in mercy from his throne our uncomplaining patience we would prove and die the general trespass to atone would die alas twill not be ours to die when the vile heathen ope our temple's doors how many a wronged and wretched one will sigh in her life-blood to wash its holy floors if succour come not ere five days are o'er this morn our elders yielded the decree sad children of captivity once more we crouch before the impious enemy but haste thee to thy task of charity do all thou canst and bid them not complain she said and bent in humbleness the knee until the attentive maid returned again then thus resumed prepare the rich array which in my days of joyfulness i wore this evening's moon must light me on the way to bring you blessed relief or come no more with one weak virgin through bethulia's vale i go to seek the assyrian chief to-night through lawless hordes that trust in spear and mail wild with success and glorying in their might armed in compassion and in faith i dare the threatening horrors of that dangerous way nor trust to purchase shameful safety there the colouring and structure of my clay these limbs have ne'er in soft allurement moved this face could never smile with siren art my honoured lord in his uprightness loved nor needed more to fix his constant heart i know thy love would every peril brave and well would wish to bid thee follow me but may thy care so true and tender save my boy that dearer one remains with thee o oh, my sapphira if these towers must fall if naught avails and ye are captive led teach his young heart to know the lord of all and tell him in what cause his mother bled 
but much is to be done the evening wends my ripened purpose may not brook delay she said and with sapphira mild descends to cast her robes of widowhood away now all the needful preparation done her handmaid waits the moment to depart but in sweet slumber rests her little son and all the mother struggles at her heart he will be safe she said or should he not his life is heaven's be it what it may thus spake religion but the tender thought evades its power she sought him as he lay softly supine his rosy limbs reposed his locks curled high leaving the forehead bare and o'er his eyes the light lids gently closed as they had feared to hide the brilliance there she kissed his fragrant lips and that high soul had melted but sapphira's bursting sigh recalled her slumbering wisdom to control the tear that almost trembled in her eye now to bethulia's gate the intrepid dame where the chief elders of the city stand attended by one trembling follower came bethulia's gate was oped at her command for though her purpose was but known in part from earliest childhood not a breath had soiled the fairness of her fame to traction's dart from that bright crystal rock fell ever foiled and all in wonder of her beauty stood to see her on the mountain path's descent they knew whatever her intent twas good and raised the hand and blessed her as she went soon with still step she treads the vale of dew where its clear founts in mournful murmurs play and the first watch of the assyrian crew beholds and intercepts her on the way whence art thou come and whither doest thou go behold a hebrew woman i have come from yon devoted city for i know my nation must be given you to consume where is your warlike leader to declare alone to him a tale of truth i fled soon may you win our hills and valleys fair nor shall a single drop of blood be shed so hast thou saved thy life and bravely done go to his presence fearlessly and free declare thy purpose never yet was known our lord to scorn a messenger like thee quick to conduct the beauty to his tent a hundred ready warriors they chose while to the chief a favorite youth was sent a flowing speech to lure him from repose in languid posture the proud victor lay gem broidered purple canopied his bed soft pleasure's breath had warmed the active day but light-winged slumber fluttered o'er his head when thus the youth rise mighty conqueror rise for more than thou canst dream of beauty bright is blooming for thee hero ope thine eyes o sun the loveliest moon is suing for thy light he slowly raised him at the gentle sound surpassing fair bagoas dost thou say fairer than pearls the light cannot be found from help me then to rise slaves lead the way all unadjusted from his couch he rose while borne before him lamps of silver flame as twere alike or beauty or repose with leisure step indifferent he came so many bowed beneath his conquering arms so many lovely captives wait his sigh unmoved he wanders through a world of charms and scarcely raises his fastidious eye and well he deemed that now some tender maid while thousand fears her hapless bosom shook her timid charms her all that's left displayed supremely happy if he deigned to look but firm at his approach the stately dame stood like a graceful column and with cheek crimsoned by scorn when near the pagan came she slowly fell before him proudly meek silent he stood a moment with surprise his every movement every look was fraught then whatsoe'er thy purpose lady rise declare to me thy nation fear thou not judith arose and uttered the deceit her soul disclaimed the while in accents free her rounded tones flow from her lips as sweet and fragrant as the drops of carmel's bee o oh, thou most excellent of all the earth 
alike in wisdom as in war renowned receive thy handmaiden of hebrew birth so shall thine efforts with success be crowned my nation trusteth in her god alone nor sword nor spear against her can prevail but for their sins her children must atone deaths on the watch and all their succors fail the first fair ears that crown the gilded field the first ripe clusters of the curling vine the first rich streams our teeming olives yield are food forbidden by a law divine those holy fruits reserved and sanctified tis sacrilege to touch with hands profane but their impatient wants must be supplied and daring all they will not long abstain by the great god i've ever served their fate is given me to know in secret thought nor might i there its consummation wait but to declare it all thy presence sought i will remain and every night intent go out to pray beside a lonely stream and when their crimes are ripe for punishment it will be told me in a holy dream soon as with duteous haste i make it known follow me warrior the way i'll lead till in jerusalem thou setst thy throne not e'en an insect's voice shall wake the mead her mellow accents ceased but at his heart sweetly reverberates their magic sound from his dark eyes his wild emotions dart and thus his tongue impetuous utterance found thou mine of wisdom gem of light divine do as thou soul directs thee thou art free all once performed the god thou servest is mine well may he be adored for forming thee so pondering on her purpose judith stayed within her tent while three days lent their light and thence with fervency went out and prayed and bathed her in a lucid stream by night now on the fourth the impatient victor spread a sumptuous feast the moments to beguile that all around with drooping pinions tread and pant to sport in the fair hebrew's smile thou goest linger not allure her here he said with fairest promise i can find no joy but in her presence ah i fear is the eye loveless when the heart is kind his lord's companion in the lingering hour well knew the youth to feed hope's flickering flame and flowing from his lip of ready power as quick as thought the soothing answer came smiles still had blessed the conqueror but she knew in too much sun the plant will languid prove and all those looks of coldness are but dew foam to refresh the roses of thy love why doubts my lord mayst thou not find as fair deep in judea's vales what flowers must glow full soon thy love and thankfulness she'll share frown not e'en now to make thee blest i go in expectation sat the noble dame for well she knew the eventful hour drew nigh and rose and decked her when the summons came with every pleasing art to lure the eye long was the feast the shades of night were up but countless lamps a noonlight splendor shed the thoughtless pagans ply the glittering cup and pleasure silenced every thought of dread near the enamoured chief with wine elate her hair save what composed the plaited wreath in glossy waves descending judith sat on skins of silky softness spread beneath above her forehead fair mid many a tress her graceful head a bright tiara wore yet seemed so much was there of loftiness as it disdained the ornaments it bore while holy scorn and detestation high oft as the treacherous stream she bows to sip fires the bright convex of her jetty eye and curls the living vermeil of her lip the chief beheld her heightened beauties glow and his devoted temples ached to rest temples which oft dark ire's suffusion show on the smooth arch of her majestic breast her soul recoiled o'er all the gorgeous place profusion fed luxurious revelry a little distant her afflicted race 
have naught to drink but tears of agony but the blessed thought to see them all repose on plenty's couch their wounded souls to cure to drown in the impious tyrant's blood their woes gave renovated patience to endure the revellers are gone the banquet's o'er and every weary slave to rest has sped but oes but remains to close the door and lead the inebriate warrior to his bed ere he departs judith with prudent care commands her maid to wait her coming forth to seek the fountain at the hour of prayer and stayed nor seemed at his entreaty loath scarcely the chief his silken pillow pressed before his towering form reposed supine the fair so warmly wished his presence blessed but love lay senseless in a sea of wine watchful begoest thou too wert in bed the hebrew with thy lord was left alone and in the lamp beam gleaming o'er his head with fatal light his glittering falchion shone so his dread folds embraced the sated snake in his own den's fell depths unfearing lies o oh, for thine own thy suffering people's sake my god nerve thou this arm and end my enterprise she said and wreathed her fingers in his hair then his last breath the proud oppressor drew the blade her right hand wielded high in air descends his neck was bare her hand was true mid the warm gush she smote him yet again and when the quivering visage severed lay wiped from her ivory arms the steaming stain and took the costly canopy away then wrapping carefully the streaming head lest crimson traces might declare the tale gave them in silence to her trembling maid and as accustomed nightly sought the veil silent they left the fountain's margin damp no watch interrogates the favored dame saw from bethulia's mount the fated camp and near the gates of the loved city came then judith's voice awoke the silent night descend o watch and praise the great divine weeping judea arm thee in his might arise arise the enemy is thine soon as that voice in accents softly loud proclaimed twas judith who her kindred sought with beating hearts around the gate they crowd and light a flame to see what she had brought behold she cries proud holofernes head ta'en by my hand as in his wine he slept behold this canopy it decked his bed yet by my god from every stain i'm kept now every one that bears a sword or spear for a great battle get ye in array soon as the morn's first glimmerings appear high on the mountain make a brave display then the assyrians seeing from the plain to seek their leader in his tent will haste and pale with fear behold the slayer slain headless and in his own vile gore debased while yet the sight congeals their pampered blood rush on them all in their confusion smite nor rest nor respite till the impious brood lie like plucked grapes in heaps before your sight end of poem this recording is in the public domain